Shalom everyone, praise, honor, and esteem to Ab Yahuwah through his son Yahusha HaMashiach. In case you want to get in touch with us, here are our contact details. You can also support us in a variety of ways. And I hope you will find this video useful. I hope I could make clear some of the points regarding Christianity and Torah, religion, in the previous part. So let me add just one more thing. I believe Christianity is a false religion, so Christians do not have to follow the law. Christians do whatever their religion teaches. However, the true followers of Yahusha HaMashiach must follow Torah, because Torah sets us apart from the world. This is our righteousness, as it is written in Devarim, chapter 6, verse 25, and it shall be our righteousness if we observe to do all these commandments before Yahuwah our Elohim as he has commanded us. Because his Torah is the one thing between us and pagans. His instruction, teaching, guidance is the difference between us and the world. The misconception in this writing is yoke of bondage is not Torah. Shaul does not talk about Torah as a yoke of bondage. He could not have been talking about the Torah. Torah isn't a yoke, it's not a curse, and it isn't a burden. Torah is Ab Yahuwah's firstborn. The Word walked among us. We just need to listen to Ab Yahuwah and His Word, and let Him define His terms. Listen to this. In the Barim chapter 30, verse 11, For this commandment, which I command you this day, it is not hidden from you, neither is it far off. It is not in heaven that you should say, Who shall go up for us to heaven, or Shamaim, and bring it unto us, that we may hear it and do it? Neither it is beyond the sea that you should say, Who shall go over the sea for us, and bring it unto us, that we may hear it, and do it. But the word is very nigh unto you in your mouth and in your heart that you may do it. It is in our mouths and in our heart that we may do it. Shaul repeats this in Romans chapter 10. Listen to what he is saying. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of Elohim but not according to knowledge. This is Israel. And everyone who wants to follow Elohim, but they do not have the knowledge. This is epignosis, precise and correct knowledge, used in the New Testament of the knowledge of things ethical and divine. What else could be knowledge, epignosis, than the Torah? These people, back in these days, used the Tanakh, Torah, prophets and writings. The New Testament did not exist at that time. That's the reason why I use the Tanakh and not so much the New Testament. If it worked for them, then we should do the same things, because these are here for our examples. For they being ignorant of Elohim's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of Elohim. People going about to establish their own righteousness. We just read what righteousness was, the Barim chapter 6 verse 25. It is our righteousness to keep all these commandments. That is righteousness. All the people going around today saying that this and that is not applicable today, the Torah is a curse, is a bondage, Jesus fulfilled it, so we don't need to do that. They are the ones Shaul is writing about. They are the ones establishing their own righteousness, their own laws and way of living, instead of submitting themselves unto the righteousness of Elohim. No matter where we open this book, it always says the same thing. In Psalms chapter 119, verse 172, My tongue shall speak of your word. For all your commandments are righteousness. This righteousness is tzaddik, justice, 
rightness, righteousness. What is right or just or normal? Rightness, justness. Righteousness of judges, rulers, kings, of law, of Elohim's attribute. Righteousness, justice in case or cause. Rightness in speech, ethically right. This righteousness in Romans 10 is dikaiosune, in a broad sense, state of him who is as he ought to be, righteousness, the condition acceptable to Elohim. Integrity, virtue, purity of life, rightness, correctness, of thinking, feeling and acting. If we look at the Hebrew, dikaiosune, used as tzaddik, with tzaddik, it is the same word. He says, for HaMashiach is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believes. Think about this for a second. If it means what Christians like to think, that with HaMashiach the Torah is over and done with, abolished, destroyed, what is the difference between us and the world? The world never followed Torah, so now, with Jesus, we do not need to follow Torah, so what is going to be the difference? How are we going to be the light to the world? If we lead a lawless lifestyle, this end is the Greek word telos, end, and it does mean the end, literally the end, last in any succession or series. But look at this here, the end to which all things relate the aim or purpose. In this context, we cannot use the end as of finished. We must use purpose or aim because that makes sense. For HaMashiach is the purpose of the law for righteousness to everyone that believes. Or for HaMashiach is the aim of the law for righteousness to everyone that believes. He showed us the way, he is our example, whom we need to follow. Hence he is the purpose of our life, our existence, to be able to emulate his example. He showed us the way, now we live aiming to be like him. This has always been the purpose of the law. So everyone who believes becomes like that person Yahusha HaMashiach was. We must pay attention, for Moshe describes the righteousness, which is of the law, or Torah, that the man which does those things shall live by them. But the righteousness, which is of faith, speaks likewise, the same, or similarly. Say not in your hearts, who shall ascend into Shamaim, or heaven, that is, to bring HaMashiach down from above? So the people of faith think the same. Don't say, oh, I, need, I cannot do this, this is a burden, a yoke. I need to go up to heaven to be able to do this. Or who shall descend into the deep, that is to bring up HaMashiach again from the dead. But what says it? What what says? The Torah. He's talking about the Barim, chapter 30, verse 11 to 14. What does that say? This is applicable to us today. This is why he's asking us, what does that say? The word is nigh you, even in your mouth and in your heart, that is the word of faith which we preach. Salvation is of faith, but that does not mean the end of Torah. That means Yahusha HaMashiach is the aim for us. He showed us a beautiful example. If a person by faith walks Elohim's way, by his Torah, he will become the true light for the world. It is very sad to read the yoke of bondage includes circumcision and the Torah. The yoke of bondage he is talking about is the belief that the works will make us perfect and sanctify us. Also, please do not forget that these people, the Judaizers, taught Mishnah, Talmud, and the tradition of the elders. And all of that together was a yoke of bondage. Now we understand, we get salvation through faith in Yahushua HaMashiach. After that, we learn 
Ab Yahuwah's Torah. He gives us his Ruach to lead us and guide us. And we can lead a lifestyle aiming to emulate that of Hamashiach. And indeed, if anyone teaches that salvation or righteousness is of works or of Torah, that is not true. Righteousness and salvation comes through faith in Yahusha HaMashiach's sacrifice. After that, proving we have faith, we are going to live according to His commandments, and that is Torah. And that's the proof of the Ruach HaKodesh working and living in us. That way we will become like Father, otherwise we are going to become like the Father of the world, like pagans or heathen. It is astonishing to me that in 1 Corinthians chapter 7 and verse 19, they cite circumcision is nothing and counts for nothing, neither does uncircumcision, but keeping the Torah of Elohim. And yet they do not understand that circumcision is a commandment of Elohim and is part of the law or the Torah. Shaul says the same thing I say. Physical circumcision is necessary based on Torah. However, that is not a measure of righteousness. What is keeping the law of Elohim? Thereby we know that we are led by the Ruach HaKodesh if we demonstrate it with our lifestyle. They write Jews did not distinguish between ceremonial law and moral law because the Torah does not distinguish between them. I am really sorry to say that, but there is not a single word in the Bible about ceremonial law and moral law. This is a man-made theology. Nowhere in the Bible there is a distinction between law and law. It talks about Torah and that's it. Please understand that you cannot say that I must do sacrifices because we cannot do sacrifices without a physical temple and a sanctified priesthood. Besides, we have our perfect sacrifice, Yahusha HaMashiach. But look at this in Romans 12. I plead you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of Elohim, that all of you present your bodies a living sacrifice. How? Be set apart, acceptable unto Elohim, which is your reasonable service. Be not conformed to the world. Do not be like the people. Don't eat anything they eat. Don't celebrate whatever they celebrate or wear whatever they wear. But be all of you transformed by the renewing of your mind that all of you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of Elohim. What is it? So we can prove that we are a new creature by doing what is good and acceptable and perfect in the will of God. See in Psalms chapter 40 verse 8, I delight to do your will, O my Elohim. This is his will. Your Torah is within my heart. This hasn't changed. Yeshiyahu says, Ha-Shamaim is my throne, says Yahuwah, and Ha-Aretz, or the earth, is my footstool. Where is the house that all of you built unto me, and where is the place of my rest? For all those things has mine hand made, and all those things have been, says Yahuwah, but to this man will I look, even to him that is poor, and of a contrite ruach, and trembles at my word. The person who trembles at his word is the person who does it. Please show me where does the Bible say that there is a difference between ceremonial law and moral law? Also, if we argue that festivals are ceremonial law, then how come Shabbat not be a ceremonial law? If Seventh-day Adventists believe that the Shabbat is the sign or the seal of Elohim, which it isn't, it isn't a seal, the seal is the Ruach. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 13 and chapter 4 verse 30 specifies that the Ruach HaKodesh is the seal, so it isn't the Shabbat. However, Shabbat is a sign between Elohim and his people. And more, as in Yechizkiah chapter 20 verse 20, 
and hallow or set apart my Shabbats, and they shall be a sign between me and you that all of you may know that I am Yahuwah, your Elohim. Shabbats, and they shall be a sign. This is not a succession of weekly Shabbats. This is talking about Leviticus chapter 23, where we can read about his Shabbats, his festivals. They are a sign together. And the person who does his will trembles at his word. So there is a sacrifice to be given, and that sacrifice is made in the temple of Elohim, which is us, our lifestyle, that we do what is good, acceptable, and perfect, and the will of Elohim, that's the sacrifice. Kepha, or Peter, in his first epistle, in the second chapter, says, All of you also, as lively stones, are built up a spiritual house, a set-apart priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to Elohim by Yahushua HaMashiach. Eating pork is not acceptable to Elohim. Not doing his festivals or his Shabbats is not acceptable to him. His Torah says what is acceptable to him. This stone, the stumbling stone, is a cause for stumbling for so-called Christians as well. How so? and a stone of stumbling, a rock of offense, even to them which stumble at the word, being disobedient, unto which also they were appointed. You see, it doesn't matter if you believe or not, if you do not follow Torah, you are stumbling. You say you have faith, that's fine. Even the devils say, and tremble. One can still be disobedient, and this stone will become a rock of offense, because they say that stone abolished the law. So we don't need to do that, being disobedient. Saying that there is uh, some sort of ceremonial law, and that's been abolished, and no one ever talk about that, and the moral law, and somehow we can just distinguish between the two having nothing written about this in the scriptures. The other Jesus they talk about in 2 Corinthians chapter 11 is the one they are preaching. The Christian Jesus is that other Jesus Shaul was talking about. Yahusha HaMashiach followed Torah, and we supposed to walk as he walked. He that says he abides in him, in Yahusha HaMashiach, if you say you abide in him, Ought you yourself also so to walk, even as he walked. So how can one say that they walk according to the way Yahushua HaMashiach walked, and don't do half of the things he did? For if he that comes preaches another Jesus, that is the Christian version of Jesus, whom we have not preached, they sure didn't preach this Jesus, the word knows, or if all of you receive another Ruach, this Ruach he is talking about, the Comforter, which is the Ruach HaKodesh, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. This is the Ruach Shaul is talking about in Second Corinthians. So think about this. This Ruach, through the prophets, through Moshe, gave mankind the Torah. How can this be talking about a different kind of Torah now? If Elohim doesn't change, as he says in Malachi chapter 3, verse 6, how can it change? Where does the difference come from? This is another Ruach, which all of you have not received, and another good news. That good news is that of Christianity. That Jesus came, he abolished the ceremonial law, and all that kind of things. He was the end of the Torah. Because Torah was a bondage, and there was a curse, although no one ever said that. So now we can just love and do some kind of moral law and we'll be fine. Now the problem is, that if people preach another Jesus, and receive another Ruach, and another good news, which all of you have not accepted, all of you might well bear with him. You are ready and happy to accept it, because that is easy. That's an easier lifestyle. What they write here, that workers masquerading as ministers of righteousness, this is just laughable to think that these people preached 
Torah and these verses about them. This is ridiculous. Read this and stop for a second and think. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Hamashiach and no marvel, for Hashatan, or Satan himself, is transformed into an angel of light. Does anyone seriously think that Satan preaches Torah and he sends ministers to bring people back to the only righteousness there is on this world? That is Ab Yahuwah's word, Torah? And they are the false apostles? The deceitful workers like Satan? When was the time when Satan preached Torah? How can one think like this? There is no ceremonial law. There is no such thing in the Bible. That's a human concept. Paradosis. Tradition of elders. People made that up. Philosophy. No, he does not talk about that. They didn't know that concept. We made that concept up, so we don't need to do that. The false apostles, the deceitful workers, those who transform themselves into the apostles of Hamashiach, the angels of light, they made up that ceremonial law thing. They made up that the Torah is a bondage. They came up with these ideas. How can a person who preaches Torah, that is righteousness, by definition, be a false apostle? How can that person be deceitful? The whole message of the good news is accept Yahusha HaMashiach and turn from your sins. Accept the sacrifice of Yahusha HaMashiach and follow Torah and that is the way you turn from sin. There has always been like this. My son, says Proverbs 7, keep my words and lay up my commandments with you. Keep my commandments and live. And my law is the apple of your eye. Bind them upon your fingers and write them upon the tables of your heart. Listen to what Ayob says. And unto man he said, Behold, the fear of Yahuwah, that is wisdom. And to depart from evil is understanding. Wisdom and understanding is his commandments, his law, his statutes, his Torah. Check this out. Say unto wisdom, you are my sister, and call understanding your kinswoman. He just said what they were. My son, keep my words and lay up my commandments with you. Keep my commandments and live, and my law as the apple of your eyes. Bind them upon your fingers, write them upon the tables of your heart, and say unto wisdom, You are my sister, and call understanding your kinswoman. Because unto man he said, Behold, the fear of Yahuwah, that is wisdom, and to depart from evil is understanding. Depart from sin, whosoever commits sin, transgresses also the law, for sin is the transgression of the law. So how can one get away from sin? By keeping Torah. Because he that commits sin, 1 John chapter 3, 8, is of the devil. For the devil sins from the beginning. So how could these people be? So tell me, how can these people be false apostles, deceitful workers, and of Satan, preaching Torah and Yahusha HaMashiach's sacrifice, when he that commits sin is of the devil and sin is transgression of the law, so we need to know Torah and abide in it in order not to be sons of the devil. For the devil sins from the beginning. He cannot preach Torah. For this purpose the son of Elohim was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Whosoever is born of Elohim does not commit sin, for his seed remains in him and he cannot sin because he is born of Elohim. There are two kinds of people. The children of Elohim are manifest and the children of the devil. Whosoever does not, righteousness is not of Elohim, neither that loves not his brother. And one means to tell me that false apostle, deceitful workers, teaching Torah? After all these, these people came from Satan teaching Torah? <laughs>
They are masquerading as angels of light. So Satan sends his people to teach others to live according to Torah and accept Yahusha HaMashiach's sacrifice. And this somehow makes sense. It is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. He says the same things as I say. These people look as if they were ministers of righteousness. We just checked what righteousness was. Righteousness is Torah. These people look and sound as they were talking about the truth, but they do not. Please let me highlight this again. The transition from Judaism to Christianity does not mean to this Christianity as we know it. This is a false religion we know as Christianity. This has nothing to do with the true Yahusha HaMashiach and Ab Yahuwah's will. The Christians of today, please don't be offended, would be considered as heathen or pagans, lawless people. Shaul had nothing to do with this. Indeed, he left Judaism, which was Torah plus Mishnah and Talmud and the tradition of elders. But he did not go into this pagan lifestyle called Christianity. What he did accomplish, however, was to transition from Judaism back to a righteous lifestyle demonstrated by Yahusha HaMashiach. And that was belief in his sacrifice and Torah. Really quickly, let's just address uh, Titus chapter 1, I think it is. When Shaul was talking about not giving heed to Jewish fables and commandments of men, he's talking about the kind of Christianity we experience today, including Seventh-day Adventists. That is commandments of man, because Torah for sure is not commandment of man. How could that be? That's the law of Elohim, so that cannot be commandment of man. That is the truth. In Mark chapter 7, in verses 1 to 7 or 9, I think, Yahushua HaMashiach explains us that the problem was and is today that humanity turns from Torah and turns to commandments of man. Circumcision is not a commandment of man in Genesis chapter 17. That is an eternal covenant made with Abraham and his descendants. So that is not a commandment of man. Shabbat isn't. Festivals isn't. The so-called dietary law isn't. None of the Torah is commandment of man. Hence, Shaul cannot be talking about that. These people follow the tradition of man, i.e. Christianity, and turn from the truth. Let's just listen to what Yahushua HaMashiach has to say. Sanctify or set apart them through your truth. What is it? Your word is truth. So what do these people turn from? The truth. What is it? His word, that is, his Torah. And the commandments of man is just that, tradition. Or a great example would be Ellen G. White's writings. They are the ones, the Christians, profess that they know Elohim, following commandments of man, but in works, their deeds, they deny him. Why? Because they are abominable. Because they eat all those things. They speak that way, dress that way, abhor his festivals. They are disobedient. Why? Because they don't follow Torah. And unto every good work, reprobate, disloyal, rebellious. Who is rebellious? Who does not follow Torah? How is that not obvious? This is just written here. It does not get any clearer than that. A person who accepts the Mashiach's sacrifice and follows Torah is not like this, cannot be. Why? Because the word will set him apart. Sanctify them through your truth. Your word is truth. The person who follows Torah, which is the truth, and accepts Yahushua HaMashiach's sacrifice is set apart. The very word that Elohim gave us will set us apart 
because our lifestyle will change, so we won't be like the world. We won't be profane, abominable. We won't be disobedient or rebellious. I fully agree that Judaism, so is Christianity, is a false religion. It's a man-made theology or philosophy. It's useless. In vain do they worship me, teaching the doctrines of commandments of man. Yes, we shouldn't think that Torah makes us righteous. I'm not saying that I am saved or or I am better than other people because I do follow Torah. What I'm saying is, this is the proof that the ruach of the living Elohim dwells in me because that compels and drives me to live according to His word, that is His firstborn, Yahusha Hamashiach. I abide in Him because I do His works. This is His esteem, not mine. Ab Yahuwah was the one waking me up, waking thousands of people up, giving all of us the chance to live according to His precious and beautiful Torah, to be different from the rest, to be set apart, not to be profane or common, ordinary, to be lights for the world. Please forgive me, because this is a, quite a long video again. But there's just no way one can pass by these ideas and not to get a little bit carried away. I would just like everybody to understand that living according to Torah is the most beautiful thing in life. Torah is Ab Yahuwah's firstborn, and that is Yahusha HaMashiach, our perfect sacrifice. So when one says that he lets or wants Jesus in their heart, basically he's talking about letting Torah, his word, into his heart. And the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit, will dwell in him and animate that Torah. And that person will live as Yahusha HaMashiach lived. We cannot say that we are like him if we lead a different lifestyle. Let me finish with this. Hereby we do know that we know him if we keep his commandments. He that says, I know him and keeps not his commandments is a liar and the truth is not in him. But in whoso keeps his word, in him verily is the love of Elohim perfected. Hereby know we that we are in him. So the person that keeps Torah in him, the love of Elohim is being perfected. Keeping his law demonstrates that we are in him. He that says he abides in him owes himself also to walk even as he walked. It does not get any clearer. So whilst the followers of the false religion, Christianity, do not have to follow Torah. We, who want to be the children of Elohim, not only have to follow it, but we ought to love it, cherish it, celebrate it, guard it, and be forever thankful for the unique opportunity to have gotten to know it. Should you want to get in touch with us, here's our contact details, and we are looking forward to hearing from you. In case you'd like to support us, that's much appreciated. Praise, honor, and esteem to Abba Yahuwah through his son Yahushua HaMashiach. Shalom.